hello everybody. This is Kira Show here. Now, whenever we last left off, things were a bit odd. Midoriya was able to take down the Nomu, but in the process he also did manifest Black Whip, along with hearing a bit of a voice. Now, Midoriya also passed out, and he would wake up in Recover Girl's infirmary. Kinda confused and, well, hurt. Recovery Girl informing him that he should be very careful. She didn't have enough stamina to... Well, he didn't actually have enough stamina. You're very lucky you did not die, young man. Many of your ribs were broken and from the x-rays, you even fractured parts of your skull. Those are very, very delicate bones. Now... She would go on to explain this to him as he would just get up. Barely being able to stand, gaining composure, getting onto his two feet, and then just asking exactly, is everyone safe? As Kendo would have walked into the room, hearing all the commotion. Now, she would just ask Midoriya a couple questions. Is he okay? How is he feeling? And what the fuck was that thing at the USJ? That shot out of his wrist. I'm not really sure. And ask exactly what does she mean. No. She would just go on explaining that along with that, she does have a bit more, well, things to talk about. Her actually someone blushing. Midori looking down at her hand and seeing her wrist. She did get healed by recovery girl, but she was also put on a bit of a... Well, she did at least get her hand wrapped, since it was still going to be a bit fragile. Now, with that being said, Midoriya would just ask if she's okay, actually grabbing her hand and cutting her off. Looking at it, actually flipping it over, asking if there was any lasting damage. Her a bit more confused and surprised. Midoriya just dropping her hand and saying that she seems to be fine before walking away. Her walking after him, trying to get answers to more of her questions. Midoriya answering some of them before asking exactly what's going on. And, well, if no one's here. Her just saying, yeah. After we all got back, they decided to start talking. Apparently some kids from the department Heard about how the strongest guy in class got, nearly got killed at the USJ. So they think you're going to be out of the sports festival. Even then, they declared war on UA. Or, well, declared war on us. Who did? Everyone. They're all out for class 1A's head. And they're going to try and get it. Now, Midoriya would have actually been a bit more surprised along with actually turning Kendo, saying that he's not too sure what this thing was. In fact, it sort of just happened. Whenever he saw it, he thought he was being attacked. He didn't know it was coming from him. Then the, well, beast thing got wrapped up into it and taken away. So, I'm not too sure what to tell you there. Now, Kendo would just say that he needs to be more careful and that he could have gotten seriously hurt. Midoriya actually walked up directly in front of her, saying, Oh, really? What about you? The reason why I threw you away from me was so you wouldn't get hurt, but you still stepped in. Her just actually looking directly at him, saying that she's a hero, of course she's going to step in. Midoriya just saying, Fine, oh well. I can't really stop you. Then again, as he would just grab her by her chin, saying that the next time she does rush in, at least make sure to hold on to me next time. That hate sent me flying towards the staircase. I could have gotten a worse crack. Her asking what he means, saying that he broke six ribs, fractured some of the bones in his skull, Broke his left arm, and well, I think I may have cracked my leg. 
I'm not sure. It just feels off. Her kind of surprised. Before at least grabbing Midori's hand and saying that, besides, you are not the one to be talking about being careful. Midori actually leaning a bit closer and saying, is that right? Before she does actually begin to blush a bit. And do one thing. She decides to see exactly how far his confidence takes him. Grabbing him by his shirt and pulling him in for a kiss. A very deep one. Midoriya actually kind of surprised. Kendo actually pulling away and staring at his face. Expecting it to have changed. No. Midoriya would have just stared at her. Someone smiling and saying, so, exactly what was that for? Before he does go to lean in again. Her actually just saying that she wanted to see the look on his face. But hey. As she would just throw up her hand and sweep Midori away. Basically pushing him off, saying that don't think anything of it. Her face actually turning very, very red. As Midori would have walked back over to her, say, saying that a kiss like that isn't something you give someone to try and mess with them. That was deep, passionate. So, guessing you want to talk to me about something, what was it? Her actually turning around and saying that the look on his face and the way he was acting with the USJ. He truly thought he was going to die. Even then, he was willing to risk everything. You just kept getting back up. Why? To defend everyone. Listen, I... Midori is just stopping. Hesitating. Surprising her. Him not really sure what to say. His heart's beating a bit faster and, well... He can't just straight out say all my secrets. Him just saying to meet at the beach. They need to talk. No. She would have been a bit surprised. As the two would have headed to the beach, and well... Yeah. When Pandora does look around and make sure that no one is around, he would begin to try and explain some things. For now, he would just explain that... He never really manifested a quirk on his own, and that this is not his power. Her a bit confused, and asking exactly what does he mean. To which he would just go on saying that his power was nothing. In fact, he was actually quirkless. He's supposed to be. Until that day we met. Whenever I met, also met All Might. He was kind of surprised to see someone who didn't have a power working so hard. Then he gave me his. What? All my can give and take quirks? No, he can't give or, well, take. That's someone else. But he can give me a quirk. Although this is something different. I'm not sure what it is. I'll have to find out and talk with him. But for now, well, that's it. And I'm kind of glad I was able to share that with you at least. So yeah, this last year, I've sort of just been lying to everyone. Why? Because. I can't just go promoting that, hey, I got a quirk and I'm quirkless. Along with that, apparently this power I have gets stronger every time it gets passed down. Passed down? Yeah. All my passed it to me. Her a bit confused. Before her eyes are widening and she realized that she would realize what that means. Midori is going to be stronger than All Might one day. Her asking about that 100% then. That's not his, well, full power, is it? Yeah, that is. That's me going completely unrestrained. 
I'm not strong enough to hold on to that yet. So I break. Now, the two would be talking a bit more, along with the topic eventually coming up. Midoriya is just saying, why not, and asking her out on a date, all of a sudden. Sanshi was talking about the whole dynamic they have. Now, Midori would have headed home and actually, well, be muted by his mother. Her a bit more concerned for his safety, along with actually telling him that he needs to be more careful. She got a call by the doctor explaining what happened to him. And, well, something else ha- well, there was something else, but she can't really piece it together right now. Midoriya heading to his room, and wanting to get a bit of rest. He uh, actually does feel a bit tired. So a cover girl was telling the truth. Now, with that being said, Midoriya would have turned back to his bed, and see something on it. An envelope. It's just having Izuku's name on it. Now, Midoriya would open the letter and begin to read what it says. Hello, Midoriya. Now, before you go think that this is some letter from a friend or an old mate from your dojo, it isn't. This is something else. I know that you're the successor to One for All. Now, Midoriya would have been a bit surprised, along with confused. The only other person who knows that is Kendo. So, who is this? Him continuing to read. Now, I don't intend to try and blackmail you or do anything like that. So calm your ass down. This is in fact an invitation. Tomorrow, this time, this place. And, well, be careful. Make a sudden move, and someone could get hurt. Midoriya actually a bit more surprised. As he would listen. His date... His date is supposed to be around the same time. So... Shit. How is this gonna work? Now. What, the, what he reads next would be a bit odd. And a bit too personal. If you're wondering how things are gonna play out... Just know that we have it all wor worked together. And that if you do refuse, then you are missing out on an opportunity that will benefit you extremely. Midoriya a bit surprised. As the rest of the letter begins to say that if he does tell her, then do understand. The words beginning to move around, saying things can get messy. Him actually freaking out a little bit. And throwing the letter away. As he does actually try and get some rest. At first it wasn't easy, then he would have passed out. Waking up and actually getting ready for his date. Telling his mom that he's off as she would watch him leave. Now, Midori would have headed to the shopping mall, let's say. And whenever he does go there, he is actually waiting around. He's waiting nearby the new meeting spot. It's going to be relatively close to where he does need to meet this other person, right? Now, with that being said, someone would have walked up directly behind Midoriya. Grabbing onto his shoulder and actually saying that, hey bud, it's nice to meet you. As the person would just whisper, play along now, otherwise you're going to get melted. Now, Midoriya would kind of be confused, along with the way this guy is holding his hand. Is this Shikaraki? Him actually looking to turn at him. Now, the guy does wear a mask, so it's not too sure as to where it is. The guy just saying that, play along, otherwise people are going to die. And, well, neither one of us want that. In fact, 
and is this person we can do walk away with Midoriya? Kendo eventually walking up, and, well, kind of confused as to where he is. The guy taking him to a nearby coffee shop, walking in with Midoriya, and then sitting down at a table. Midoriya is seeing a lot more people sitting there. Him walking over and sitting down. One of the people, well, someone will come walking up to the table, grabbing a chair and immediately sitting down. Midoriya turned to see his face and his eyes widening. As at the table, there's quite a few versions of himself. Yes, I am doing this. For those of you who are screaming at me, this is a crossover event. Now, Midori would have seen ten corks Deku sit down. Now, whenever ten corks Deku does sit down and look at Midoriya, he would have been a bit surprised, asking if this is the one of this world. As a black light Deku would just say, it appears so. And rewind Deku, the one at the very top, would just ask exactly why is he even here, or why are they even here. As all for one Deku would just go on saying that it's quite simple. This one needs a bit of guidance. And I believe no one knows power is better than you two. As well, things would be getting a bit more odd. This is one of our Deadpool Deku would just say that he's still not really sure as to why they're even here. I could have just given it to the kid and call it that. Eden Deku just saying that if he did that, then, well, you wouldn't give a proper explanation. As the K Deku would just take off his 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 jacket hood and just saying he's sorry about that. But well, yeah, you gotta understand. Him is still a bit confused and asking exactly what the hell is going on. This doesn't make sense. Ten Quark just saying that it's gonna make a lot less in a couple minutes. Him looking up to see a waiter, and the waiter will walk by and not really pay them any mind. Kinda confused, asking exactly what happened, turning back to see that everything around them is all blank. Getting up and standing up, actually backing over the table, falling onto the ground. Deadpool Deku saying that that wasn't him. Eden saying he's sorry about that, but this is the closest place he can think of. Anyways, confident Deku getting back up and asking why is, well, how is, as Eden Deku would just snap his fingers. Confident Deku getting an explanation in less than a millisecond. Oh, why, uh, him taking a deep breath and then calming down. Beginning to understand which each version of this, well, himself is. Most of the ones here are villains, except for three of them. The one to his left, the one directly in front of him, and the one on his other side. Who apparently, from what he knows, or saw, is equivalent to a reality warping being. And the one with white hair, albeit older, or possibly the oldest, is actually quite powerful himself. Being able to make places, or even whole universes. Him at least knowing that his son cre can create realities. And to K Deku, he has all for one too. And he does actually rule over his version of Earth. Now, after a lot more of a long-winded conversation, Midori would have been explained to, but the, would have gotten the explanation by these people, and exactly what's going to happen in his future. During the sports festival, 
he is going to do something very, very stupid. And in order to prevent that, they are going to be giving him this. Deadpool Deku holding up a little vial. Saying that a few drops of this stuff will heal anything. Don't use it at all, might though. That's not going to work out very well. Now, along with that, he would have met this 10 Quarks version of himself. Along with Rewind Deku. Who is basically here to, well, explain Midoriya exactly what this thing does. Now, the rest of these versions of himself would have told him that they all need to go back to their respective realities. And that it was nice to meet him. Now, before they left, he would have asked all of them questions that he wants to know the answer to. He wants to know why some of them are villains, and why three of them aren't. Him getting the explanation that they're villains because in their realities, things didn't go as planned. You were born without a quirk, yes, but we were born with them. However, as Blacklight Deck would begin to speak up, saying that he was not. This isn't a quirk. It's a virus. Long story short, virus did this, virus did that, mutation, 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 fleshing bacteria, which I can control. In fact, because of that, we actually cleaned our earth and reduced a lot of things that happened there, mostly crime. Now, I gotta get back to my kids. Same. Yep. Me too. Looking at all the older versions of himself. Asking exactly, why do they all have kids? Well, you see, young man. When one thing leads to another, shut it, man and mask. <sighs> now, Rewind would just say that, yeah... He's not too sure about it either. And, well, Confident Deku would just turn to 10 quarks and ask him exactly what the fuck is a corklet. Why is that word in his head? Oh, in my reality, there are things worse than being born corkless. You can be born with too many quarks. Don't you have them here? No, I've never heard of a corklet. Not in my life. Ah, then I believe I might be mo the most rare of them all then. You see, in my respective reality, you can be born with more than two quarks, or, well, a half and half quark. They can be completely unrelated to each other. This is what we call a corklet gene. The gene can be small. You can have a half and half quirk and another quirk. But sometimes the gene gets stronger and heavily, heavily mutated. This gene is mine. And because of it, I was born with 10 quirks or five. You can still manifest quirks in your four. This Deku actually kind of shocked and wanting to take notes on that, along with learning about Rewind Deku's ability. He is able to completely re manipulate matter on an atomic level, along with time. That is kind of powerful, but he can't stop it. Now, after a long-winded conversation, he would have learned about exactly who each versions of his respective counterparts' his wives are. Deadpool Deku, some chick named Toga, Hacker Deku, Momo Yayirozu, the dark-haired chick in his class, Decay Deku, Mina Ashido, another chick from his class. And he would have learned that, apparently, the invisible girl in his class is a blonde. 
Learning that straight from Ten Corks, as for Blacklight Deku, it's Ochako Yuraka. Finding that actually a bit odd. Asking exactly what happened in his reality. Well, she apparently, whenever they were on an APC, he thought she died and, well, got ripped apart by a monster. A couple years later, I made a couple friends. Meh, didn't care. I thought she was a regular villain, but, well, surprise, surprise. Old things come back up. Now, all for one, Deku would just state that, well, his wives are kind of odd. And you would not believe him if he tells him. Confident Deku just asking exactly what does he mean, wives. As he would just list off their names, along with the names of his children. Yeah, that's a lot. As Eden Deku would just say that that is all for now. Handing over this little vial, saying that their time here is enough. And if he stretches reality any, any more, then he believes that he will begin to open it. And that would be bad. Well now, I believe we have answered all your questions. Eden Deku would just bring his hand up. And snapping his fingers. Midoriya a bit surprised as they're in this dark open void for one second. Then he's back at the shopping mall. And Kendo is running up. And, well, she's a bit more surprised to see him. She did arrive a little early. And Midoriya would look at his phone. That was an entire hour's worth of time. But it just says that... Well, on his phone, that he's still five minutes behind. So, what just happened? Looking down at his hand, at this weird vial. It's just saying one thing. In case of emergency. Now. Now. Midoriya would just be looking at his hand. And, well, staring at this vial. Still reading the text on it. Kendo actually asks him if he's okay. He looks a bit off and, well, nervous. Her never really seen like him like this before. In fact, he's barely just starting to do this as it is. Him just saying that he, he's fine. Shoving this vial into his pocket and the two would head off on their date. Now, I do hope you guys enjoyed the video. And have an amazing day. I'm probably going to switch back over to my old microphone because this one keeps bugging the fuck out.